Hi, my name is Lisa. Um, I This is my second time at Fate Teshuva. I was here in uh, 2018 and 2019 for about nine months. Originally, I am from the Bay Area. I was, uh, I was born in Dallas, Texas. My parents are high school sweethearts who are still together today. They just celebrated a 50 year anniversary. I have an older sister who's three years older than me. And uh, we moved from Dallas to California when I was three years old. Um, my parents uh, are very wonderful people, very supportive. My sister and I are very close. Um, we had really great, pretty average, nor well, I would say normal childhoods, very involved in dance and soccer. Um, I loved acting and pretty much anything that had to do with um, being on stage and performing was always fun for me. Um, and we grew up in Los Altos, California, which is a suburb south of San Francisco, um, kind of right in the heart of Silicon Valley. Went to Mountain View High School. Um, and I was, even through high school, I was a very um, active kid, really friendly, had a you know, wonderful group of close friends. Um, I would say for the most part, it was very typical. Um, but that typical childhood included um, some weekend partying that involved drinking and smoking pot, which I, we probably started younger than the, maybe what would be considered the average kids, probably about 13. But then by about 15 and 16, we were taking weekend night trips secretly into Oakland to go to raves. And so that's kind of where I was introduced to the harder drugs. Um, I would say that was definitely um, where I first stepped out of just typical um, drinking at people's, you know, parents' houses on the weekend, friends' parents' houses, and getting a little bit uh, into a little more dangerous territory. So um, I did realize pretty quickly throughout high school that I had some serious goals. I wanted to go to college. Um, my sister had my sister had graduated um, senior year of high school when I was a freshman and had gone off to Tulane in New Orleans. Um, so I really wanted to, I saw how fun she, how much fun she was having in college and what a good time she was having and all the cool friends she was meeting. I definitely wanted the college experience. So um, I kind of pulled my act together around senior year so I could make sure I was able to go to a four-year university. And the school that I chose, which is a little funny now, um, is Chico State. And I chose that purposefully because there wasn't a huge drug culture there. It was primarily known as um, a party school, but partying via drinking alcohol, not so much not so much the harder drugs. So I thought that was a wise choice for me. It is a party school and I partied appropriately, um, but I also graduated. I was a media arts major, media arts and communication design. I had known since I was a kid, I wanted to move to LA and I wanted to be in the entertainment industry in some capacity, whether it was producing or, well, definitely always behind the camera. I did not want to act in front of the camera, but I wanted to be involved in television production in some aspect. After I graduated college, I did um, backpack around Europe for a summer and then moved straight to LA with a uh, boyfriend who I had known for most of my life actually. We ended up moving to Los Angeles together um, and I did get jobs in television production which was great but unfortunately he was a drug addict and he was using um, coke and meth while we were living in LA and as any um, most addicts know that one false falsehood is that if you change locations, the addiction won't follow you. So we moved to Dallas, Texas. His drug addiction followed him, and that is really where my drinking began to pick up. He, as he was using and working at nights, I found myself drinking alcohol every night with um, a close girlfriend of mine to pass the time and not be drinking alone. So that went on for um, a few years, actually, and I, I knew I was drinking a lot, but I didn't realize exactly the extent of damage I was doing to myself until that relationship ended and I moved back to California and realized that I had definitely become an alcoholic. It was really hard to function and get through my days um, suddenly without, without drinking. It was now my new normal. 
So I did a lot of secret drinking, a lot of hiding. I did end up meeting somebody else and getting into another serious relationship, but all the while continuing to hide the extent of my drinking from everybody around me, my coworkers, my friends, my family, and him. Um, he and I eventually did get married. We had a lovely life for about a year um, until my drinking really caught up with me and it was the first time that I needed serious professional help and needed to go to a rehab facility. So I was checked into a 30-day rehab facility and uh, one week in, um, he came to visit as soon as possible, as soon as we were allowed visitors, and told me that he did not want to be married to an alcoholic and that we were getting divorced. It wasn't really a question, it was a statement, we are getting divorced. So that led to a long run of me being very afraid to ever ask for help again. I thought that asking for help led to rejection and abandonment and it had very detrimental effects on um, my future with trying to live in recovery. As soon as I was out of that 30 day rehab, I relapsed immediately and spent the next few years um, bouncing back and forth between sober livings and jobs. I would get great jobs in the Bay Area, but I would inevitably lose them or or just sabotage, self-sabotage myself into a place where I wasn't a person I was happy with at all. I was drinking to the point where I was drinking and driving, driving so drunk that I ended up getting multiple DUIs all within a very short time span. I didn't think I it mattered if I lived or died anymore. I didn't see a way out of living as an alcoholic. I thought this was it. And in the course of that, I did um, move back to Los Angeles to, this would be rehab number two. I spent the next year um, in sobriety, living in sober livings, flying back and forth between Los Angeles and San Francisco for my court hearings. I was finally granted uh, an, a year sentence in county jail that was modifiable to a long-term rehab. I, I spent one month in county jail in San Mateo County and it was awful as you can imagine. I had to be released to Beit Shuba, so Beit Shuba being the wonderful people and place that they are sent the rehab to me. They flew somebody up to San Mateo to come get me. Part of my sentence was a year with an ankle monitor attached to me that would detect alcohol if I drank it and I spent the next nine months at Beit Shuba. I spent my time um, getting sober, getting healthy, really changing my life around. I joined the marathon team, ran the half marathon with the Running for Recovery team. I met my future fiance who, um, and, and, and many, many close, great friends who I'm still extremely close with to this day. After we got engaged in 2020, we moved to um, his hometown of Whittier, which is uh, about 40 minutes south of LA. And that is when I saw my life changing a lot. Essentially, I went from a big, beautiful life working, but also still living about five minutes from Beit Shuba, seeing my friends on a daily basis, to a much smaller, confined life of working from home in a city I was new at, new to, and not really having a huge connection with my recovery community, with my sober friends. I wasn't the person that I used to be, the fun, happy, outgoing, charismatic person that he fell in love with. So we decided that some things needed to change and I thought the best way for me to regain my life, my sobriety, my sense of self was to call Beit Shuba again and see if this might be a good time to come back and really sort out my mental health, my physical health, my um, the sober life that I've really wanted to live. I've been here three months now. Um, I am doing a awesome internship, doing social media for Beit Teshuvah's um, sites, really making new friends, but reconnecting with old friends, my partner and my family, and just really having the beautiful life that I came back here to to find again. So I'm so happy and so grateful and just honored to be part of this community again.